Thanks for having me. Um, it's quite important to ensure that there's a follow through to every aspect of work that we concluded in Durban. You'd recall that we have very important key political issues that were concluded there. So even apart from the Durban platform, we need to look at the Kyoto Protocol second commitment period, which was agreed to in Durban. We also agreed to the commitments made to actions from then, at the time, between now and 2020. That's the pre-2020 commitments. And those have got to be implemented. So they're not quite isolated. So these are part of package of the Durban deal. And then, of course, the post-2020, which is the, the Durban uh, platform. So we are quite excited, indeed, that these talks are proceeding in Qatar. We are following uh, last year. And uh, in Qatar, there was a solidification of uh, all these uh, Durban deals. Implementation began. We are now here continuing with uh, further implementation. This being the second midterm, in fact, of the period leading to us 2015, it's quite important for us. And the, from what we see and what we see unfolding here, already uh, parties, some of the parties have gone back home to commit on the second commitment period, which was quite important. As South Africa, we have already passed cabinet stage with a commitment of second commitment period, meaning that we are now part of those who would implement the Kyoto Protocol Agreement. And now we're urging other parties who also committed to do so to really do that because in Qatar, people signed up to second commitment period. That's what's unfolding here in Warsaw. And we are happy about that because we know that no one of the parties wants to go home and tell people that we went for negotiations on two negotiations and came back with nothing. Uh, because the public opinion is quite important in that direction. Therefore, we are also here to look at, amongst others, this uh, part of the deal that we agreed to, uh, the pre-2020 deal. And the discussions, as we see, are unfolding quite well in that direction. There could be a little bit more done in the area of uh, ensuring that we increase the levels of ambition, which is really quite a very sobering issue because the report, as we have seen, that came out, uh, which is a review, a mid-term re the review does indicate that indeed it is necessary for us to close the gap of uh, uh, below two degrees Celsius that the world's temperatures must be recorded at, at that level. And it is important that that gap is closed. The only way we can close that is by ensuring that we close the ambition levels. In other words, parties need to be serious about this and commit uh, the pre-2020 emission reduction, which are and we believe would be in line with their national action programs funded. But there's also an element of a shortfall in funding in that direction. So there are two gaps that which we believe in the discussions here needs to be concluded, need to be addressed. And then, of course, we are for unfolding the deal, that's a, uh, the Durban platform, about what form of a deal must we have, uh, the legal nature of that, uh, and the discussions are unfolding here. It's not too early, let's say. It's important to do work here, we believe, and we need to pressurize ourselves so that when it close Warsaw, we can say with confidence that Lima will at least take us a step forward and we will finish the uh, agreement for all and applicable to all by 2015. If we postpone from that time, it will be very, very disastrous. We need to keep the levels of uh, uh, Celsius degrees below two uh, degrees and therefore all of us needs to act. Um, people here are quite disappointed with how it's been going. Um, uh, at the beginning of the week, Japan announced that they were reducing their emissions targets. Um, Australia is. Um, aren't both of those things um, um, meaning that any deal in 2015 won't be strong enough because countries are going back on their targets already? 
Well, indeed, we have made a point in our national statement expressing our disappointment in those countries that are saying uh, we are not coming forward, especially with in ensuring that they become part of closing the gap, firstly, of a, um, uh, the level of ambition, secondly, of the finance, because we need these finances to actually act, to put in action. And these, and these are countries that are developed countries which needs to play their part. And that disappointment is not going to be expressed only in disappointment, but as we go on with these negotiations, because remember, it's not done until it's done on the last day. And what about um, the uh, loss and damage text? I mean, obviously that was a bit beyond um, Durban, but um, uh, that's a contentious point for a lot of countries, the Philippines especially, um, Yebsano on uh, fasting, unless they get meaningful, meaningful action. Is South Africa supporting a mechanism on loss and damage? Well, yes, indeed. I'm going to speak in two, uh, from two points of view. One, being a South African and representing South Africa in this discussion. Secondly, being a facilitator uh, of the loss on the loss and damage uh, area. We are part of the G77 plus China as South Africa. And what we're looking for, obviously, is a mechanism, a, an arrangement, institutional arrangement, which, by the way, we facilitated and agreed to in Qatar last year. Because we believe there's got to be some arrangements through which the loss and damage issues can be addressed. And that's a view of uh, the G77 plus China that perhaps we should have a completely separate arrangement. But as you know, this view is a completely extreme end of views of other people who are saying, no, let's have task force, let's have this and that. Uh, and the G77 has also said that this is our view. We want to go away with something that we really can begin to work on as a platform of the action uh, going from here. But fortunately, as a facilitator, we have managed to, till now, at the negotiations level, let me start there, we negotiators have been hard at work. Within the 11 days, the 12th day today, of them being here, because remember, our negotiators did not quite discuss at Bonn. They started negotiations here. On the 11th day, which is the 12th today, they had already had a text which is clean. What is really now, it was bracketed, but they removed the brackets. They were this morning looking at the preamble. What is to be attended to is what sort of institutional arrangement is needed. Secondly, the support to that institutional arrangement, those institutional arrangements. We are looking at those two issues. As a facilitator and co-facilitator with minister from Sweden, we have been engaging with the ministers at ministerial level from yesterday afternoon till now. I'm actually going to one of those engagements right now as I leave here. We are engaging. The Philippines are meet, we're meeting this afternoon. We have met Oasis. The meeting of Oasis is going on now. Trying to get the ministers really to now begin to help us find the lending zone and a possible lending zone. Because we do note that this being a point where people come from very serious extremes, opposite, completely opposite. There's got to be, we've got to find a lending zone. We, what we do not encourage ourselves and parties to do is to go back three years ago. We need to find something that is workable and therefore compromises are necessary here that will not necessarily put anybody in jeopardy when you go home. No, we're not asking for crossing of red lines, but we're asking for meeting at a point where we can take something home that gives us a program of action to, go, to work on from here. I don't know whether you've heard, but the NGOs have walked out today in disappointment because of the lack of progress. Um, and part of that will be your Durban platform that they believe is um, gone backwards and if not stopped. Um, how do you, do you feel their frustration? Well, of course, the negotiation go like that. Yesterday, this time, I could have answered the, that question by saying, yes, I think uh, things are not going well. But I'll say, it's not done until it's done. Yeah. So that last minute is the one that will actually tell us where we are. But we think that negotiations are still ongoing, and the ministerial high levels are continuing 
so we will be able to tell the story, the final. And I don't think that the direction is taking the Devon deal backwards, because indeed, it will be a very great disappointment. We are here to ensure that that is defended with all that we have, but we'll debate and discuss within the means that we have and in those discussions. And I think it will go on better than what we, where we are right now. One more question. The polls have been criticised for um, failing to um, get enough progress at this talks. As someone who's hosted a, uh, a COP, well, how, what do you think of their performance? Let me just say in the first instance, you've got two judgmental points to make or point of references. And it, the first one is the venue, the organisational work. That's fantastic. Must say... Well, even sponsored by Big Coal? It, what? Sponsored by coal. I know, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's actually good. Uh, let's put it that way. I mean, we, have had a very, we had a very good venue. But yes, let's go into the, the, the consultation. I think that we need to understand the... Firstly, let me say that the work done by the polls is actually good. I think it is good. And given the fact that we have been to so many cops, this is one of those that has been that is well, that are well organized in terms of content in terms of discussions in terms of the focus the polls are actually saying let's identify and they've identified issues that are quite important finance being one loss and damage being one which is quite spot on because we know and level of ambition and then of course the the Devon platform we have met them and we've had their plan and i think we agreed with their plan of course, to advise here and there, uh, uh, at the time we did, but I think it's ongoing, it's, it's going on well. By the way, let's also remember that these negotiations are in the hands of the parties, not Poland alone. So parties must make these negotiations a success. Without the parties determined to do that, Poland can do so much and not go beyond what they are able to do. So it is in our hands. It is our duty, and this is the reason why we say we are here as one of the parties. We are here in Poland to help work with the Polish to actually interpose and ensure that indeed these uh, negotiations become a success. It's not done until it's done.